Hi everybody! Who's ready for some book reviews? I'm Tabitha and today we're going to be reviewing some books. I've already finished five books in the month of November and I'm trying something new for November. Instead of waiting till the end of the month and bringing you all the reviews at once, I've decided every time I finish five books I'm going to go ahead and post a review. Even if it's not Tuesday. So that's why I'm bringing you reviews for the first five books that I've already finished in November. In the description down below you'll find helpful timestamps that'll show you the title of the book and let you jump to that book if you're looking for that review. You can also in the description find a link to a document where you can suggest to me a book that you had a part in bringing to life. Please remember to flood the comments with your own input or opinions about these books or other books that you think I might like based on something you see in this video. Let's get Let's started. Get started. The first book I finished for the month of November is The Next Person You Meet in Heaven by Mitch Albom. This is a 2018 publication by Aesop Inc. It is a contemporary adult novel. Inspirational fiction might be a good way to describe it and it is 224 pages. Your synopsis. 15 years ago we met Eddie who died saving the life of a young girl named Annie. Now in this sequel to The Five People You Meet in Heaven we'll read Annie's story. So what didn't I like about this book? Well, the first thing I can say I wasn't crazy about for this one is the ending. I can't say much without spoilers, but I can just say that I was left a little confused and I was expecting to have more answers from which album book than I got. The second thing I didn't really like about this one is that I wanted more of Paolo. He's a solid character and of course so are the rest of Mitch's characters, but there was just something about Paolo that I really liked and it made me want his story. The third thing I didn't particularly like about this one is it sort of felt like this book was downplaying something that could have been either depression or PTSD. I understand the reasons why this may have been overlooked or pushed aside in this story, especially when Annie was a child, but something in me was hoping that this would be confronted as Annie got older. More could have been done with this as Annie grew to an adult. So what did I like about this one? Well, first of all, the little details in the story that throw us right back into the five people you meet in heaven are wonderful. You never felt like you needed to go back and reread the story. Mitch album gives you enough information that you remember exactly what was happening that was relevant to this storyline in the previous book. The second thing I liked about this one are the connections. Again, just as it was in the first book, this one focuses on how human lives intersect with each other and the impact you can have on another person even without knowing that you did and I absolutely love that idea. The third thing I liked about this one is Eddie. Man, I love this character. Eddie was a favorite from the original book. I liked his cynicism. I liked his reality. He just was a well-rounded character and he delivers again in every scene that he is in in this sequel. So who do I think should read this one? If you're a reader who absolutely loved the five people you meet in heaven, of course you're going to love this sequel. If you're a person who's looking for an inspirational but non-traditional idea of what might happen when we die, I'm going to suggest this one and it's original. Overall my rating for this one, I went four stars. I enjoyed this one and I recommend it even though I wasn't crazy about the ending. So four stars for The Next Person You Meet in Heaven by Mitch Album. The second book that I've already finished for the month of November is The Things That Keep Us Here by Carla Buckley. This is a 2010 publication by Delacorte Press. It is adult age category and genre I would say dystopian science fiction. Um, this book is 480 pages. Your synopsis, H5N1 flu has hit and it's killing 50% of the population. Anne, locked in her home with her family, must make life or death decisions to keep them all safe. So what didn't I like about this one? The primary thing that I could see being a problem for everybody, and it was certainly a problem for me, is that this book has a very slow start. You're going to have a little trouble getting into it at the beginning. It does improve and pick up in pacing. The second thing that I can say I wasn't crazy about for this one is that the romantic side plot fell flat. I get what the author was going for here. I understand and appreciate the message she intended. But something about this side romance just didn't work for me. The third thing I didn't like about this one is really the side plots in general didn't work for me. The fire drill, William, Peter's father, Uncle Mike, all of this is ultimately completely unnecessary to the story and takes you away from that major storyline. I understand that without all these side plots the story might have been really short, but I also think it might have been better. So what did I like about this one? Well the first thing I can say I liked or loved about this one is the ending. 
I'm glad that I stuck with this book because although it had a slow start, it had a very realistic and interesting ending and I liked that. The second thing I liked about this one is the realism on the horrors that could occur in a worst case scenario pandemic like this. The reason I called this dystopian at the beginning instead of just saying science fiction is that H5N1 didn't have a full-blown pandemic, at least not to my knowledge, in our society. So that makes this almost like a dystopian because it's exploring the idea of a society that did have a full-blown pandemic. But I liked the way Carla Buckley kept this to realities and possibilities, even though this is a worst case scenario. The last thing I did like about this one is Kate. She's not our main character, but she is an important character. And she felt like she was the most honest and well-written character in this book to me. I liked her character arc. I liked her spunk. I just overall liked the way Kate was written and I would read it again for her. So who do I think should read this one? If you like dystopian, but you don't want the YA spin or the hero trope, I'm going to suggest this one. If the idea of the story where the world stops because of a health scare or pandemic, I'm gonna recommend this one as well. Overall, my rating, I went three stars for this one. The main plot would have been a four, but the side plots brought it down just a little bit. So three stars for The Things That Keep Us Here by Carla Buckley. The third book I finished for the month of November is Fan Mail by Ronald Munson. This is a 1993 publication by Penguin Book Group. It is an adult age category mystery thriller and 401 pages. Your synopsis, Joan Carpenter has just landed a job on the evening news show in St. Louis, but there's one thing she can't control. The obsessive fan whose sick letters reveal a dangerous obsession with Joan that may get someone seriously hurt. So what didn't I like about this one? First thing I can say I didn't like about this one is the final chapter. I have to say chapter with air quotes because none of this book was actually written in chapters. I'll explain more on that in a minute. Anyway, the book, in my opinion, would have been better without that small, short, final chapter on the end. It's not long. It would have not changed much to take it out. I just think it would have been better without it. The second thing I didn't particularly like about this one is we do have a rather cliche cop in this story. He just wants to pin it on one convenient person instead of actually searching suspects. And I'm kind of tired of that trope. Then again, I have to remember that this book was published in 1993. So I don't know, maybe that wasn't such a big trope we were seeing in 1993. Third thing I didn't like about this one also has to do with kind of a cliche character and that one would be the news program president who cares only about ratings and literally about nothing else and he'll stop at nothing to get the ratings. Like with the cop, I am sure people like this exist, but I feel like it's a character we've used too many times in books, television, and movie and I was hoping for something a little more refreshing. So what did I like about this one? Well, the first thing that I can say I liked, and this is a big, big, big like, is the formatting. I mentioned this in something I didn't like, so I'm going to explain it a little bit better. This book is written entirely in the form of memos, faxes, phone messages, and emails. It's different and interesting, and I liked the way this came across for the most part. It really worked for the story. It added tension, it added mystery, and it added an interesting element to it without making it be like you've seen a hundred times before. The second thing I liked about this one, and this is important in a mystery thriller, is that the mystery was solid. It kept me guessing all the way through. I was surprised by the ending, and by now you probably know that I like to be surprised by my mystery books. Um, and this one just really delivered all the way on the mystery front. I didn't have it all figured out, and I love that. The third thing I liked about this one is our main character, Joan. She is a solid character. I like her attitude. I like her ambition. I like her sense of humor. I already mentioned there were a few cliche characters rolling around in this book, but Joan was a breath of fresh air for those stale tropes. I'm glad that this book followed Joan as a main character. So who do I think should read this one? If you're looking for something a little different, I think you should give this formatting a try. If you like mysteries that keep you guessing and even have scary moments, I'm gonna recommend this one. Overall, my reading for this book, four stars. I really liked the original formatting and I recommend this one to anyone interested in trying that out. So four stars to Fan Mail by Ronald Munson. The fourth book I finished for the month of November is Jenny of Lebanon by Gabrielle Alexa. This is a 2019 publication by Sisyphean Publishing, which is an independent publishing company. It is an adult age category contemporary story and it is 59 pages long. Your synopsis. Billy's life is in shambles. He's having enough trouble keeping himself and his poor cat alive. Maybe it's just a bad patch and he just needs a few weeks to get himself back together. Fate, though, has other plans. Her name is Jenny 
and she packs a mean punch. So what didn't I like? Well, first, a warning. This is a novella. It's a short snapshot of our characters' lives. If you're not a fan of reading a short snapshot and not getting all the answers, you might not like that. Now, you already know I don't have a problem with that. I just thought I should give you a warning. So something I actually didn't like about this story is Jenny. I got the sense from the opening quote and, of course, from the title that Jenny was going to be really important and maybe should be a character that I liked. I didn't. She instantly strikes me as the kind of person I would not get along with. The third thing I didn't like about this story is the mess overall. To be fair, it's well written it, and it's important and it's symbolic for something in Billy's life being a mess, but it made me cringe. I'm not a neat freak by any means, but the mess made me cringe. So what did I like about this story? Well, first of all, the descriptions. Right from the start, it's clear that Gabrielle Alexa has put time into writing this story. It's packed with gorgeous language that helps paint a picture of exactly what is happening. The second thing I liked about this one is Billy. I might not have liked Jenny, but Billy came through for me. I can relate to what Billy must be feeling and the pain of his story arc really comes through in every scene he's in. You see his pain symbolized or mirrored in his living conditions, in his cat, in everything. It's really a great study in symbolism. The third thing that I liked about this one is Martin. Okay, admittedly, I'm the kind of person who if I meet you and you're walking a dog is gonna spend time talking to your dog and really have to fight to talk to you. I love animals, but this cat is well-written. He has personality and spunk and he's not on every page of the book, but he dominates the scenes that he's in. It takes skill to write an animal with so much detail that I get a clear picture of them and this book definitely does that. Who do I think should read this one? If you're the kind of reader who likes beautiful language and emotional stories, you can't go wrong with this one. It's 59 pages, you can read it in an afternoon, and it's highly satisfying. My overall rating for this one, I went four stars. I enjoyed this. The depth and the descriptions Gabrielle Alexa was able to get out of a short story surprised me, and I liked that very much. Four stars for Jenny of Lebanon by Gabrielle Alexa. And the fifth book that I've already finished for the month of November is an ARC, or an advanced reader copy of Hearts, Strings, and Other Breakable Things by Jacqueline Perkins. This book is coming out in December of 2019 by HMH Books. It is a young adult age category, and I'd classify it as a romance book, 384 pages. I do want to say a quick thank you to NetGalley and HMH Books for Young Readers for providing me with my free copy so that I could give you this honest review. Your synopsis. Eddie Price is forced to traipse back into her family's high-end home in Massachusetts after the death of her mother. But even as she's trying to focus on school, she finds herself drawn to two boys. And if Eddie gets caught between them, someone's heart is going to get broken. She just hopes it's not hers. So what didn't I like about this one? The first and most shocking for me is that I felt like this book gave us a slightly inaccurate picture of Eddie's grief. This book makes attempts at capturing the grief associated with the loss of a loved one, but I felt like it didn't do enough. We're talking about a girl who's lost her mother but I didn't feel like there was enough scenes showing us or telling us what it felt like for her or showing how much this can flood and discolor everything in her life. I wanted more about her grief than I got, or maybe I just have felt stronger grief. I'm not sure. The second thing I didn't like about this one is, and I've said this before with romance, we had some stereotypical characters in this one. Eddie's cousins, Henry, Claire, they're all exactly what you'd expect these characters to be. The third thing I didn't like this one about this one is that, honestly, it felt like you've heard this story before. There are slight variations in this story, sure, but ultimately, this is a teen rom-com book. So what did I like about this one? The first thing is that it's adorable. I just described it as a teen rom-com, and you expect a little adorable out of that, and this book delivers for sure. The awkwardness of first-time infatuation is absolutely present. Eddie is cute in her attempts to be a little different, and they work. The adorable nature of this entire plot and cast are really one of its biggest selling points. The second thing I can say I liked about this book is that this book, although it's for teens and it keeps it pretty PG-13, this book delivers on the heat. There, you spend the first half of this book having literally no physical contact or kissing, and yet somehow it's still driving up that heat and that emotion and that passion between some of the characters, which is a really cool skill to have. It's a slow burn romance in that it's it's building, 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 and when that finally connects with that kiss, that heat is definitely there. The third and final thing I liked about this one is that it's quick. I think I finished the whole back three quarters of this book in one sitting. Once you pick up and gets moving, it goes. 
So who do I think should read this one? If you are a fan of teen rom-com books or movies, you like the adorable cute, you like the little heat, the little wiggling butterflies in your belly that make you think of first love, you're gonna love this book. Overall, if you just like slightly cheesy, totally feel good romance, I'm gonna recommend this one. Overall, my rating, I went four stars. I just simply cannot ignore how fast this one read, and how into it I got, and how fast it read once it picked up. So four stars for Hearts, Strings, and Other Breakable Things from Jacqueline Perkins. This one is a good one to add to your December TBR since it should be out next month. Okay, that's it for me and the reviews of the first five books I finished in November. I will be back the next time I finish five or the next Tuesday that rolls around the calendar for my regular videos. Hit subscribe so you know when I'm back. Give me a thumbs up if you like this video. Keep plotting the path to your dreams and I will see you next time.